Picture this, you have an iPhone 11 Pro Max, you're using it, you're watching TikTok, and all of a sudden the screen goes blank. And you're freaking out because you can still hear the phone is working, but nothing's showing up on the display. So you go to a repair shop, they swap out the screen multiple times, and still nothing is showing up. This is a motherboard issue that is causing the screen not to work. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process to repair the motherboard. This is an advanced repair, so I don't recommend you try this at home. Instead, you can send it to us for repair. So I will link to my website down below. So just submit a request for a quote and we'll send it over right away. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. So one of the first things I like to do is test my known good parts to see if it's truly a motherboard issue. So this is the customer's original screen. There's no physical cracks on it, no physical damage other than just normal wear and tear, but the screen went blank. This is my known good screen. I have it marked with the happy face. It is, it is cracked, but it for sure shows image and works. So let's go ahead and try this out. All right, so the screen's plugged in. We're plugging it into the charger. We can see that it's charging. It's starting the charging process, but the screen is still staying blank. There's no signs of image on the display. Actually, I just felt it vibrate as well. So we could sometimes get away with using the mute switch, see if it vibrates to show signs of life that is booted. But as far as I can tell, it's at least booting up. So let's go ahead and dig in deep into the motherboard issues. All right, so here's the motherboard already out of the housing. And then let's inspect where the LCD or the display plugs into. In this specific model, it is OLED, so technically not LCD. But if you match where the screen flexes go, that's where you want to start your investigation. So this is one connector and this is the other one. Just from my experience, I know that this one is touch and this one's image. Physical inspection of the connector. Is it damaged? Is there any kind of water damage? Is it physically warped or bent or anything? I do notice this here is a little broken actually. Although it doesn't make sense based on the backstory that they were watching TikTok and then the screen went blank that the connector would just fail like this. This would be from, probably from another shop who was trying multiple screens, may, may have damaged the connector, uh, just pl plugging in and unplugging a bunch of times. Another thing is I noticed some debris in here, which could also be part of the last shop. So just based on the backstory, it doesn't make sense to focus on the connector, uh, this piece, because what matters is not the plastic housing, but the actual pins. Uh, other than that, everything else, there are these components here are underfilled, meaning there's like this rubbery black glue around them. It kind of, might be hard to see on the camera and we can't really see their condition. They're essentially covered up. So next thing to do is to investigate the actual readings of this FPC. All right, so we gotta use a program like ZXW to find out what do these pins do and what are their readings? So nice thing about ZXW, it does provide known good diode mode readings. So we're gonna use that to measure our board against the ZXW uh, readings and see if we find any faults. Uh, we're gonna use our multimeter for this step and it does require uh, fine tip multimeter probes, a microscope and this program to do this step. So like I said, if you guys don't have the tools to do this yourself, send me a message through my website we do offer mail-in service for anyone in the US. I'm gonna start off here and kind of work my way up. Now I don't, uh, I wanna click out of it because it's kind of hard to see. So, so that way it's all yellow and we can see the numbers clearly. Start, like I said, at the 293. Multimeter is set to diode mode, which is this little symbol there. It should say OL when you're not touching anything. And then when you pro short these together, you should get uh, all zeros or maybe 001, right? So let's, Put our red probe on ground. So that would be uh, something metal, SIM tray, NAND, this metal shield. And then we're just gonna go down the, down the list here. So the first one, like I said, yeah, 293, we get 302, that's close enough. Second one, two, 293 as well. Third one is blue, which is OL, that's expected. Third one, 737, we get 340, 746. So let's just go down the list. I'm not gonna read each one. <laughs> Two, eight, three. And look at that. Uh, pin 16, expecting 647, but we get 962. So let's investigate that pin. So let's zoom in. So the name of this line, it's very important to read the name of the line itself. Don't worry about pin 16. If you tell someone, oh, my pin 16 is reading this, no one knows what pin 16 means. But if you say 
PP3VL display VCI con says, I'm expecting 647, but I'm getting nine something, 900, then that's an obvious fault and then we can investigate that issue. So in this case, we got 900 something on this line. And if we study, where does this line go? Where does it come from? What does it do? Just, just follow along. So anything in red is the same line. So picture like this is all connected into a line. And then this is a filter here. FL basically stands for filter. Um, and a filter is basically like a little wire. So it's like a fuse. If too much power goes through this fuse, it blows and disconnects this side from this side. But a working fuse or filter will have a straight path connection through it. So essentially, uh, think of it as like a little bridge that should be connected. So in theory, this reading here, 647, should go and flow to this side. So I should get 647 here, 647 here, 647 here, and here, as well as, let's see where else does this go. If we just zoom out, we could click this button here that says net, and it'll jump to the next point. So basically, all these are the same line. And if you zoom out, this is actually inside the sandwich. It would require a lot of work to split the sandwich and check over here. So let's just focus on this point here. So let's see, do we get the same reading as we get here on this side? This is a quick and easy way to check if your filter is blown. Let's find this pin easier. So if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the eighth pin from the bottom Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See that 963? That is the bad reading. We're expecting 647. So what I like to do is kind of scratch this little plastic piece here, or I could just mark it here. All right, some, some way to just easily find it. And then if we look at the components next to it, this is all underfilled. We're gonna clear out some of this underfill. So using a little bit of heat, we're gonna clear out the underfill so here's the line I'm interested in. So I'm basically just gonna start there and clear this here. So there's gonna be one of these. So looking at ZXW, it actually goes diagonally to this one. And then this is the filter here. So if we clear this out. I'm using a scalpel blade. By the way, I'll link to all my tools from today's video in the video description below as usual. And if you have any questions or if you're learning stuff from this video, make sure you let me know in the comments. And if you're looking to send in your repair, send me a message for a quote. We respond as soon as we can. We give pricing up front. No diagnostic needed for most cases. Just tell us what's going on and we'll give you a, a quote based on our understanding of the issue. All right, so I cleared out underfill for the important part. Yeah, see 850-ish, 860, look at that. The filter, 860 something. And then on this side, whoops, probe slip. This is the hard part about probing these small components, it's hard to reach. Look at that, so on this side we get 602, this side we get almost 900. A filter should have the exact same reading on both sides. The fact that it has a big variance, about 300-ish, tells us that there's a problem. We could also measure across, although good luck with that. Look, a uh, filter should have straight continuity across, so you should not have a diamo reading. You should have 000 or 001. This one does not. So. Those are two different ways you can check a filter. Your filter should measure as if you were touching your probes together, like that. Because it's basically like a wire, like I said, and, it's, and it has a diamond reading. That means it's losing some of, the, some of the signal from one end to the other, generating a diamond reading. So that's gonna be our problem right there, and we gotta replace it. So we're gonna use uh, some flux here. And then I'm gonna use my micro pencil. This is my T115 iron on my action. Oh, look at that. I barely touched it and I lifted it up. That was really easy. See that? 
Next step is to prep the pads on that, where that filter was, because we need to solder a new one on there. And we need to make sure there's solder on these pads. And like I said, these are very tiny. It's a really tiny spot. So having this, the right tools also is critical. If you try to use like some random, you know, Radio Shack soldering iron, good luck. You're not gonna be able to solder any of this. All right, so I've added some 183 Kester solder. This is a 6337 low melt 183 Celsius solder. And look at those pads. They're nice round little bumps of solder. Next, let's get a donor board to pull this component from. Now having donor boards is a key thing to doing a lot of these motherboard repairs because it doesn't make sense to buy specific components for everywhere on the board. You're much better off buying donor boards, which includes tons of components that you can use from one board. So it's definitely worth buying donor boards. Right, as the eighth pin, and it's gonna be this one here, if I did this correctly. And we'll check the reading now uh, after this, so we can verify that the filter is good. Look at that, 554, which is because of the heat. Heat brings down the reading down a little bit, and then should get the same reading here, 560, and then this one, 560, and then on the bottom side, 560. See that? This bottom reading, 564 is the same as the top. So let's go ahead and pull it and place it on my customer's board. Add a little bit of flux. Let's see if I can get this to fall off like the last one. I'm gonna use my micro pencil, add some solder on that side, add some solder on the bottom side. Let's see if I can get this to come off. It could be that the last one came off because it was blown. Yeah, it's not coming off as easy. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of hot air. So let's do 330, 335. Now remember, this is a donor board, it's a dead board. I don't care what happens to it. So it's fine uh, how much heat I apply. I'm not concerned about the board. I just care about this filter. So you can see I'm touching the filter. Both sides are melting. And there you go. I'm able to bump it off. And I got it to stick to my iron. See that? Now let me bring my customer's board, which actually, I need to add some flux. So let me see if I can get a little bit of flux in there. Now this is where it gets tricky to place it. Let's see if I could do it with just the iron. This is gonna be a, uh... oh look at that. I got it to solder on the bottom side, although the top side looks a little sketchy. Oh, I think I might've gotten it. Now I'm scared to put my iron too high on the top because I might burn that plastic the connector. This requires very good hand skills to solder this on without causing all kinds of damage. It's not something you could just learn overnight. It takes tons of hours of practice. I'm not sure if it's soldered on from below. So what I'm gonna do I don't want to keep burning the flux. I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh flux. And then this is where it gets risky. I'm gonna use a little bit of hot air to install it, but you gotta keep in mind, this is a sandwich board. This is a two layer motherboard. So here, let me show you the kind of anatomy. There's two layers. If you use too much heat, you can separate the two layers by accident and then have other problems like no service, no Wi-Fi, and some other other stuff. So you got to do this without screwing that up. And also the NAND is right here as well. If you overheat that, you're going to have no power or boot looping or who knows what. So you got to do this very skilled, very specific uh, skill that not many people know how to do this. Not many repair shops are capable of this. And I think I just got it in there. Hopefully you guys saw that. It kind of just flowed into place with very minimal heat, maybe like five seconds at most. Cause I hit it with my iron and then I saw it flow into place and then took away the heat. So let me clean this up really well. Did we solve the bad reading? Cause if we solve the bad reading, the phone should be fixed. Diode mode on the suspected pin. Look at that, 580. If we check on the left side of the filter, 586. 
right side of the filter, 587. That's just because it keeps rising, right? The board is hot. Look at that. The reading is now traveling across this filter to the cap. It's all connected now. So uh, let's go ahead and test this out. All right, so I reassembled the phone. I have everything plugged in. I did have to get another screen because off camera, I started noticing my known good started flickering and was not working properly. And I also tested the customer screen and there was no image at all. But now I have a known good screen from another phone. And let's go ahead and plug this in and you'll see that it is starting to charge again. And then we have an Apple logo. So now we have image and it's working. And let's see if we get to the home screen to get a fully working phone. And there you have it. We have the home screen and we have touch. So let me unlock it. And there you go, it's working. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys are liking and subscribing. Down below, I will link to all the useful stuff from this video. So all my tools, how you can support me, whether it's my private forum, the locals community, or if you want to buy this t-shirt, or if you want to send me a repair, we do offer mail-in service for anyone in the US, including repair shops, which is a discounted B2B price. So thanks everyone for watching. I'll post another video for another iPhone repair down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.